Uh, today morning, a beautifully read uh, Exodus, uh, the book of Exodus, especially chapter 28, with so much of details. It talks about the priesthood, so much, so much of details about the priesthood. And I was thinking, man, Sunday morning, people are going to sit, turn off the camera in their pajamas, not even ready to open their left eye or the right eye, barely <laughs> breathing. What are we going to say about this? And um, there are a few lessons I learned from this, which is remarkable to me and remarkable to our ministry in Seventh-day Adventist Church. So that's what I want to share with you quickly, three points, if it's okay. There's so much that you guys can contribute as we're going to discuss. And finally, I will summarize it. But three things that strike in my head that I would love to share with you is that, number one, when it comes to priesthood, that we read just the first two verses about the Aaron. The priesthood in the Old Testament, uh, or the priesthood of Israel, was not earned by effort or ambition or qualification, but it was given to them. And they must be born in the tribe to be a priest. It's the, it, it, in the Old Testament, it was a crucial because people came out of slavery and God is actually giving them the order. God is giving them, hey, listen, you, you being influenced by all this chaotic and toxic rulership but now i'm giving you freedom now i'm giving you dignity now i'm giving you an identity that i'm not saying this tribe is different this tribe is different all tribe is different and individually they are blessed with potential i'm giving it to you so when it comes to priests, there's something peculiar about it because you're not only going to serve for god but you're also going to serve for your people and it is not going to come by your passion. It's not going to come by your qualification in New Bull College. It's not going to come by your uh, aspiration. Oh, I want to be a priest. But it's by a given to them. And secondly, you must be born to it. Right? But forget about being born in that tribe. But it's more about God is calling. It, 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 sometimes it is actually even relates to the salvation. Salvation is not actually earned by efforts or aspirations or things, but it's done by the faith that we have towards God. And more, more about this is not our faithfulness to God, but God's faithfulness to us is, saves us, right, from our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. But when it comes to priesthood, it's pretty much the close the same thing that we can say. It is not given to them by the efforts or aspirations or qualification, but God called Aaron and said, okay, this is the man. He started with it. And the whole 28th chapter, the rest of them is about the dressing, the turban, and it's funny that how the priest at the turban and Punjabis Sikhs in, in our community, if you look at Indians, we do have that too. <laughs> uh, even some of our weddings, people have that uh, style turban still today. And there is a dignity uh, in the Bible. We have it uh, to cover their head. And in, 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 uh, in uh, oh, we got sister, we got sister Florence. Okay, come on, come on. We got some priesthood going on in here. But when you come into the New Testament, God breaks that barrier and he says, Whoever in Christ, they are royal priesthood. Come on, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. You don't need to be born into the family anymore. You don't need to be born in a king's family to be a king's anymore. You don't need to be a born in a priest, a priest or tribe, a Levite tribe to be a priest anymore. You, if you're in Christ, you are already a pastor. If you're in Christ, you're already an evangelist. If you're in Christ, you're already working for God. That is the privilege that he had given to us, that because during the time when God actually took them out of slavery, he gave them this great uh, freedom for them okay you know what with the freedom i'm also making your life with meaningfulness and fruitfulness okay i'm giving it to you but what people done is instead of working for god and for people people started to work more for them and when they started to idolize them 
the poor people, the innocent people, the people who are outside of the, uh, the people who's in the wilderness, the people who's Gentiles, the people who are outcasted, actually felt, you know what, if I could only wear that turban, if I could only wear that priest, could, if I just only wear that clothes, I might serve better God and the people more than these people are serving themselves. God, I, the people were actually so eagerly waited. That is why when Jesus came, he broke the barrier and he said, you know what, no longer you need to be born into the family in order to serve. I am here. I broke that wall. Now, guess what? Whoever in me, they are royal priesthood, not just earthly priesthood, but royal priesthood. Because in Revelation, we read that he makes us to sit on the thrones and say, okay, you know what? Here you go. Let's do the judgment now. Isn't it beautiful that God actually not just redeems us to this morning, but he also give, puts a meaning into our lives. That every 21 here, including me, God doesn't just saves us, but he saves us with a purpose and meaning to say, you're not just a redeemed person, but you're also a royal priesthood. You're also a royal priesthood. So please consider that, that when God actually calls us into this, into his marvelous light, into the redemption story, into a beautiful light. What you need to realize is that you no longer need to be a part of something, you know, to be a pastor. You don't need to be a part of the family lineage or Levite or uh, you don't need to be a pastor son in order to become a pastor. You don't need to be anymore a grandson of a pastor, grandmother of a pastor so that you can become a pastor. No, 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 no. You don't need that. You can come from a broken family, yet in Christ you can be a a priesthood you can come from uh, in a worse situation work circumstances worse uh, families that you feel so ashamed but God embrace your embarrassment and he says I put a meaning in your life which is you are a priesthood a royal priesthood the bible says in first Peter chapter 2 verse 5 this morning I want to tell you the first point is that God actually gives us the privilege. In the Old Testament, yes, Aaron was chosen by God. And also, also, this is a beauty. In the Old Testament, it was not earned by efforts or aspiration. Likewise, in the New Testament, you becoming a priest or a royal priest is not done by your efforts. Guys, let me tell you this, right? In our churches, we have this holy competition, I put it this way, holy competition. The more you work, you feel like you're more being what? Purposeful. How many of you know that? The more you give the Bible study, you feel like, oh, God is really using me. The question is, is it about the quantity or is it about the quality? It took three and a half years for Jesus to train 12 people. So, Mom. I'll call, uh, I can't call Auntie Paula. I need to call her mom Paula. That's why I titled her because she took care of me when I was in Luton. You know, mom, it took 12 years. It, it, it took three and a half years to train for Jesus to train 12 disciples. But when we are in priesthood, now that goes to my second point about the breastplate. We are not just serving for the Lord we also responsible for the people because that's what says the word that the breastplate was given as a judgment that, that the God's judgment is upon it. And with the stones, with each stone has his own symbol, but then it comes to a place that the Bible says, okay, let's go back and read it. Right. Um, uh, in the, from 15 to 30, when we keep going, reading it, it will say, it says, and you shall put the breastplate of the judgment, the Urim and the Thummim, and they shall be over Aaron's heart. When he goes in before the Lord, so that Aaron shall bear the judgment of the children of Israel over his heart before the Lord continually. So the second point I want to tell you is that in the ministry, in the royal priesthood, it is not only what we are doing for God. The question is, what are we doing for the people? Because we can often just think about serving the Lord. We forget about the whole purpose. 
why the Lord has called us. You see, the law that God has given us in the mountain of Sinai was the law of love. But people overall misused it where they made it that salvation by law. And then along the way, the people were traumatized and religiously traumatized, saying, oh, you must do this, you must do that. 52 things you should not do on Sabbath. That, that, that was the rule of Jews. They said, you can't do these things, you cannot eat this, blah, 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 blah. And people were like, okay, what's this all spiritual journey with Jehovah? Where am I going with this? The sacrificial of lamb in the tabernacle eventually became what? As a religious rituals not something meaningful. When I see the blood, it doesn't make me guilt anymore that I should not go back and do the same, the same sin that I was doing. It doesn't make sense anymore. But then when Jesus died on the cross, it made a real sense. And he gives us a purpose to become a priesthood that we not only carry the breastplate, not physical breastplate, but a spiritual breastplate on our plates, a burden, I want to say that. Because no one's going to carry that much of weight of gold on our chest every day. Think about it, guys. You wake up with the gold, asleep with the gold, and you get up with the gold, brush your teeth with the gold. <laughs> Come on. Taking a shower. Who's going to do that? But what he's talking about is the, it is the about your burden. Oh, let me scratch it. I don't want to be very hard on you this morning. I'll be saying more. The passion for God and for people. There's a lot of people leaves the church, not because they hate God. It's not just not about hating people. I thought it's all about hating and not hating God. Not hate. It's it's all about hating people, but more than that, the people feel unworthy. To become to the presence of the Lord because of the lifestyle that they have, the traumas that they go through, the heartbreaks that they go through in the church, and not just in the churches, but during the six days, and they come to church and they feel so unworthy. The people used to sing doesn't sing anymore. The people used to preach, they don't preach anymore. The people who talks about God's grace and love, they don't want to do it anymore because why? They feel unworthy, but God gives us this privilege of priesthood he puts a meaning in it i put a brace a breastplate on you as a royal priesthood it is a it is a it is a, a burden i would say and and a fire in your belly on your chest it's not just to serve the lord but also serve judgment a good judgment for the people not a judgment like okay that's it you have to do this this is what the standard you need to meet up no you say yeah the standard is too high but guess who came down from that standard to love you, to accept you, to take you to a beyond a place. So number one, I, want, I learned something that I would like to share with you. That priesthood is not just um, being given by the efforts or, or aspirations or qualification, but God giving us freely to become a royal priest. The second point is that God gives us a breastplate as a symbol of a burden in our heart, not just to serve the Lord, but for the people. Um, my dad always tells me, Jeff, you can focus about doing something so much and you forget about who you're doing it for. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, sometimes we can do so much in the church and we forget about who we're working it for. We're not working so that I, I, tell my, I tell my members in this church, we are not working so that our names will be in the messenger magazine. Come on. We, we are not working so that we can be on the newspaper titles. We are not working so that we can actually become famous in the local community. We are working for the people. So when we get to heaven, someone just reach out to Ronald and say, Ronald, thank you so much for the prayer, man. I didn't react it immediately, but he led me to come to heaven. Wow. We are not looking for short gratification, instant gratification. We are looking at a long-term vision. 
We are thinking about that holy city, Jerusalem. We're thinking about the new Jerusalem. We're thinking about, boy, the transformation, not just get information and put in people's throat and boom, and the magazine comes in, 10 people got baptized, but nine of them left. We got only one left in the church. That is not what we are talking about. We are talking about the real service of judgment because judgment is beautiful. You know why? Who's judging? Christ, the savior who died for you and for me. I'm glad that Jesus is being my judge more than some people on the parliament. Come on now. I, I, I want Jesus who knows my story to be my judge than people who doesn't even know me, but, the, but judge me only when the case is on their table. And this is the beautiful text that reminds us from Exodus 28, that number one, God actually given us the privilege to be a priesthood. Secondly, God puts the breastplate, which is about uh, the, uh, uh, it is about the a burden and a passion, not just to serve for the Lord, but also serve for the people. Number three, we read the word pomegranate, right? We read, we came across the text called the pomegranate, the design of the pomegranate. But have you ever noticed that some of the theologians struggle to explain too many things. But one theologian that I really loved in Adventism, he says that the pomegranate often explains about the fruitfulness. It's fruitfulness. The ministry is about the fruitfulness, being fruitful. And if you look at it, it directly go back to the Genesis and also the book of John. In the Genesis, God told us, be, go, and be fruitful. Yes, of course, it's about making people, you know, have children and enjoy it. When you come to John, it is not the same fruitfulness what Jesus is saying in Genesis. He says that, if you abide in me, I make you be fruitful. And this is something that I want to leave with you guys in Exodus 28. The beautiful, beautiful text that inspired me and, and, and uh, Auntie Paula, I have, to, Mommy Paula, I have to tell you that thank you so much for giving me the text. Because whenever we go to Exodus as an Adventist, we're more focused about the sanctuary message and the Ten Commandments. We forget about this beautiful thing because sometimes we'll be like, yes, yeah, too many words. It's like, what is this, gems? I never seen these diamonds. I never proposed my lady. I never gave my husband these things. Why should I? And number two, I'm an Adventist. Why we have to go into jewelry, you know? But when I read it, this text is beautiful. It says pomegranate, right? Immediately, the theologian said, it, it, it talks about being fruitfulness, which God told us. We cannot be fruitful on, the, on abiding in our works. We can be only fruitful when we abide in Christ. We cannot be fruitful only abiding in Christ on Sabbath. Because seven day ad, being a seven-day Adventist is not being one day or nine to one o'clock service, but it's about 24-7. You, you cannot be fruitful. Just someone, you, you, the, a tree cannot bear fruits by receiving water only once in a week. It needs constant watering. It needs constant sunshine. It needs constant care. Sooner or later, it will bear the fruits. No, no, no. This is another beautiful thing. Jesus says, if some doesn't bear fruits, guess what happens? Some the, Traditionally, it said that they will be plucked and thrown in into the fire, right? That's what I heard. But in other text says, if anyone is fruitless, you know what the master will do? He will just lift it up so that he can get the more sun, the plant get more sun, so it bears more fruit and becomes a better plant. Oh, I love this. God doesn't treat us the way people some treat us in the church. That he says, just because you're not fruitful, it doesn't mean I'm throwing you away from my garden. What kind of a God he will be if he throws away? 
He says, I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to give you some time. I'm going to speak to my father and say, Father, this person needs more grace, more mercy, more love. They've been through so much that they forgot there is a God who loves them. And guess what, Lord? Just lift that plant up a bit higher so the sun can just have get received the light. The, the plant get received the light. And guess what? When it rains, the water will first touch us. this plant that is being unfruitful. And guess what, Lord? That one can can be fruitful. You and me sometimes, sometimes can be like that. We might feel like, oh, I'm not being fruitful. I'm, 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 not, I'm not doing well. Hey, just because the seed is under the ground doesn't mean the seed is dead. Wow, sometimes just because the seed is actually planted under the ground, it doesn't mean it's dead. It doesn't mean it's dry. It is just in the process of growing. God, when he puts a says, you're going to be, a, a, I put a pomegranate design on you being a royal priesthood in the New Testament. Do you think God says you're going to be a fruitful by your own efforts? Then what am I here for? Why are we struggling? You know, we often want to serve for the Lord and for the community by our efforts, by our smart work, by our ideas instead of starting from the one who created this whole process. Because if we understand that priesthood doesn't come by our efforts, but it is given, the same person who is given, who also knows how to lead us. That's why Paul says, I know whom I believe. I know whom I believe. And he's able to take care of the things that I'm struggling with. Friends, I want to tell you something today. Moms, dads, and uncles, and aunties, and my elders, and deacon, deaconesses, pastors, I want to tell you something. Don't be hard on yourself. God called us for a high purpose, but he also gave us resources for us to rest, recover, revive, so we can revive other people. Often in our church, I heard from my childhood, if you don't revive yourself, you cannot revive others. That's true. But God also knows how to recover you before you revive. Because how can I revive myself? I'm just an empty, broken vessel. How can I revive? But in Christ, he recovers me. He fixes me the places that need to be fixed. And he takes me to the process of healing. And then he gives me the process of recovering. Then he said, here you go. Let's revive now. Because how can I be revived when I'm broken? That means I'm juggling, you know, like a joker. I'm just juggling. And sooner or later, I'm going to burn out in the church. The same person who was in front of the pulpit will be the same person outside in the backside, sitting somewhere, hiding myself, and I'm just going somewhere. And then here comes Jesus. He said, listen, let's recover. Let's take time to process through it. And then revive. So I want to tell you guys today, quickly, three points again. Number one, that God calls us by not by our efforts, not by our, our you know, excitement and all this, but God calls us freely by his death and resurrection, by his interceding for us. He made us as a royal priesthood. We need to believe that strongly. Secondly, we need to believe that the breastplate that God has given us, it is not just to serve the Lord, but it's also serve the people in the community. Number three, that God is told us, okay, I put the design of pomegranate to be a fruitful, not by your works, not by you being talented, but because I'm the one who created in you. So I want you to abide in me so that you can be fruitful. May the Lord bless us, guys.